Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. Today I have the uncommon pleasure of sharing a vintage Patek Philippe yellow gold Tiffany dial 2526. This is from the first family of Patek Philippe automatic winding timepieces powered by the caliber 12600 AT. The watch was released in 1953, phased out by approximately 1960, and during that period, roughly 600 were created. So considering the ravages of history and attrition, this was a rare watch that has only become more so. And because the 2526 wasn't given its proper accolades by the collector community until fairly recently, Immaculate survivors such as this one are rare in the extreme. Now this is a watch that wears easily but has a handsome presence on a modern wrist, though vintage in size and proportion. It's approximately 35.6 millimeters across the round of the case from 9 to 3. It does have a lot of character because in a traditionally sized case, the lugs can be a more pronounced component of the style. They don't have to be cropped down indecently to make the watch fit human anatomy. And thus, as a result, the watch has a reasonable span of 43.6 millimeters from lug to lug, which is quite close to the 44 millimeters of a modern 36 millimeter Rolex Datejust for comparison's sake. The watch is fairly thick, but not because the watchmaking is clumsy or sloppy, rather simply because it uses a broad plexiglass crystal that's domed tall above the bezel. As you can see, there's a beautiful curvature to the dome style bezel, which is recapitulated in the curvature of the plexi. So the watch is 11.3 millimeters thick, but it will easily slide underneath the dress cuff because it has so many rounded flanks about its profile. You'll also note the beautiful off-axis distortion rendered by the plexiglass or thermoplastic crystal. Now the watch has a lug spacing of 18 millimeters, so if you want to get started on accessorizing, that's the size strap to order. You'll note that the watch has beautifully full and evenly sized lugs. This is not the proverbial pebble in the stream. This watch, though probably refinished once or twice in its history, is remarkably intact in terms of both metal volume and definition. And you can see that in particular about the swells of the lugs and the junction between the bezel and the case band. Now, you can see the proper screwed in case back with original 18 karat hallmarks blazon. So this watch is still quite intact as you can see from a marking basis and you'll note the original opposed back-to-back -back Patek Philippe period double P crown still present and correct. Now inside the case I mentioned that the caliber 12600 AT is present and it does deserve a little bit of a shout out because it is a significant part of Patek Philippe history. The first Patek Philippe automatic winding caliber, it was a 30 joule masterpiece blazing with the Geneva hallmark. It was a 19,800 vibration per hour beat rate, five position adjusted, high level gyromax balance automatic caliber, that is to say automatic watchmaking executed at the highest technical and aesthetic level possible during the early 1950s. Now Gyromax was still current events when this watch debuted. Gyromax was Patek Philippe's variable inertia balance system, effectively a free sprung balance solution designed to make timing and regulation more precise and also more robust in the face of bumps, disruptions, vibrations on the wrist. The movement is fairly fairly large and thus fairly robust. Uh, 12600 means 12 French lean in diameter, so 27 millimeters in diameter. It fills out the case fairly nicely. Also, six millimeters thick, that's the 600 part. It's not one of the excessively thin calibers that often are subject to shall we say delicate handling in order to further their survival. This was a robust daily wearable movement in the 1950s that remains that in the present day. So from state of the art in the interior to quite literally fine art on the dial side, the relationship between Tiffany and Cohen Patek Philippe dating back to the mid 19th century. It's an old story and a glorious one, but the real story about this dial is that it combines the rare Tiffany Co. signature with a generation one 2526 white enamel dial. Now you know that because there were actually feet about the polished yellow gold indices and the feet are little pegs on the bottom that inserted into corresponding sockets on the dial. And thus, if you look closely, you can see that there are small dimples about the periphery of these applied indices and those indicate the presence of a first generation white enamel 
2526 dial. Now enamel is something truly spectacular. It has a wonderful glossy gleam, a richness to it that is almost like wet paint. And it's wonderful because it manages to shake off the ravages of years. As long as you're delicate with the dial while servicing it, don't crack it. But it won't tarnish, it won't corrode, it won't fade or degrade, it won't patina or turn tropical. And the enduring beauty of the enamel dial is one of the core features that surround the appeal of the 2526 and have been responsible for its recent resurgence from relative obscurity on the collector's market. In immaculate condition, part of a rare and historically important family, and signed with the unusual and desirable double logos of Patek Philippe and Tiffany, this 2526 Series 1 is an immaculate and eminently desirable companion for the next century of Patek Philippe excellence. For the collector of vintage paddock or the man who's looking to have a one and only flagship vintage piece for his collection. You cannot do any better than this yellow gold automatic Patek Philippe 2526.